Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tibet for May 15th, 2016. Well, it's the time of year again to start discussing the upcoming hurricane season. This will be my unofficial outlook on what we might expect to see in the Atlantic this year. The official outlook from NOAA will come out usually in late May, probably in about a week or so. And as usual here, we'll be focusing primarily on the ocean surface temperature anomalies. And the reason we do this is because the ocean has longer persistence than the atmosphere in general, so it's to some extent easier to predict the ocean um, out to a couple of months. And the ocean and atmosphere do influence one another strongly, so if you know the ocean fairly well for the summer, you can predict some things about the atmosphere, especially in the tropics. And this makes a lot of sense because most of the tropical latitudes are in fact water, not land. So the ocean, to an extent, influences uh, rising and sinking air in the tropics more than the land does when we're talking about the hurricane season. So the ocean is a big deal. So as usual, we'll talk a lot about it. And if you um, haven't been keeping track, during the winter, we had a very strong El Nino in the Central Pacific, which means a lot of warm water in here. And this is now uh, reversing quickly toward a La Nina. You can see uh, some cold water starting to show up in a sliver along the equator here in blue. This will begin expanding west and meridionally with time as we get into the summer. And as the European shows, uh, the forecast from most of the models is for a very steep drop off toward a La Nina state as soon as June or July here. So very quickly we'll be reversing to a full La Nina and then you see it kind of leveling off for the remainder of the actual hurricane season as we get toward next winter. And so we'll likely be in kind of a weak La Nina state for the Atlantic hurricane season. Now this is normally considered very good for the Atlantic hurricane season uh, in the sense that it's favorable for hurricane development because when you have a La Nina this is normally what the sea surface, tem surface temperature pattern looks like with the cold tongue over the equator of course and normally this forces anomalous sinking over the Pacific shown in red here very strong sinking relative to normal you get ascent relative to normal over the Indian Ocean and Indonesia and the result of this is that the Atlantic sitting to the west of all of this upward motion over the Indian Ocean uh, this is an optimal configuration for the Atlantic in general to be just west of where the air is all rising and you get lots of hurricane development off of Africa and moving westward and this correlates well with active hurricane seasons when you have that La Nina. However, if you look at the model forecast for the summer, which is very similar to what we have currently, is that the La Nina develops like you would normally expect, but note that we have this warm horseshoe of water relative to, relative to normal to the north near Hawaii and off the western coast of North America. This is not what you normally expect. Note that you normally expect cool water west of North America. Uh, when you have a La Nina. This is a negative PDO pattern and normally they go hand in hand with La Ninas but this summer we're expecting this positive PDO pattern to remain. Note that in the analysis we, we have that. We've had this uh, quasi permanently for the last year at least and this is forecast to persist throughout the summer in the model forecast and so this warm horseshoe of water um, now changes things in the Pacific because normally all of this water is cold and so you get all of that anomalous sinking in the Pacific. Uh, but now that we have this warmer water near and east of Hawaii, we now uh, allow potential for more convection than you would normally expect during a La Nina in the eastern Pacific. This is kind of like what we had last year except with an El Nino where we had all these hurricanes near and east of Hawaii. We might actually have above normal tropical activity in the central Pacific again this year despite a La Nina. This configuration is rather rare. Um, it appears to have only happened three times during the 20th century. Twice in the 1930s, once in 1985 uh, when you have a positive PDO and a La Nina simultaneously. And even in 1985 this was not nearly as pronounced as it is this year. So this is a very rare configuration and it makes it difficult to choose analog years. Normally we can get a great idea from historical uh, situations what may happen this time if it's a similar situation. But uh, this situation has not happened very many times in observed history and so this throws some problems into the hurricane forecast where normally this is uh, almost a guaranteed uh, active hurricane season for the Atlantic but with this configuration um, that calls that into question and if you look at the CFS forecast you'll see why where we have all this divergence in the Indian Ocean which you would expect during the hurricane season with the La Nina but instead of a giant blob of orange indicating sinking air in the Pacific like you would normally expect you instead have kind of this sinking area this rising area and then sinking over the Atlantic so you can see this anomalous convection occurring due to the warmer water because of that positive PDO uh, despite the La Nina enhancing Pacific convection and so you get this anomalous sinking over the Atlantic instead. 
This is also enhanced by the fact that if you look at the model forecast, again this is very similar to the analysis as well, in fact I'll just show you that, you can see all this cold water in the North Atlantic, warm in the middle, and then cooler than that in the deep tropics. This is a negative Atlantic tripole. This is not favorable for Atlantic tropical activity because you get anomalous ascent here during the summer and anomalous descent um, in the equatorial region during the summer. So this is a weaker Hadley cell than usual when you have this configuration. This is getting closer to a negative AMO look in the Atlantic and that is forecast to persist um, in the model where you have this big warm pool to the north. This is not uh, a favorable pattern for Atlantic hurricane activity especially in the main development region. And uh, this, together with this stuff in the Pacific, combines together to give you sinking in the model over the Atlantic. And no, we don't trust seasonal models that much, but this makes a lot of sense given the ocean configuration that we're seeing and expecting over the summer. You can see this in the European forecast as well. This is the precipitation anomaly forecast during the hurricane season. You can see uh, the drier air or uh, drier conditions along the equator due to La Nina, but because of that positive PDO, you have warm water here, so there's wetter than normal conditions due to anomalous convection near and east of Hawaii. So you might even have an active East Pac and Central Pacific hurricane season out there despite the La Nina, which is rare. And then you can see the drier conditions in the main development region of the Atlantic due to the anomalous sinking uh, due to the reasons we just, stock, we just talked about. You'll note that closer to the United States and the Caribbean we see normal to even above normal precipitation anomalies indicating that we may actually have uh, near normal levels of convective activity and tropical activity in this area. And the reason you might expect that is because if you look at the SST forecast again, uh, this configuration here um, and the Atlantic tripole configuration does not support um, strong activity in the main development region to the east of the Caribbean, but when the Caribbean here is warmer relative to normal than the East Pack near Mexico, as you can see here, then that's generally a positive signal for the Caribbean itself because you get higher than normal pressure here, lower than normal pressure in the Caribbean, and so you slow down the trade winds by getting anomalous westerly flow due to that pressure pattern. And when you get that, you can get more convection because air piles up in the Caribbean due to greater convergence in the low levels. And so you can get uh, higher tropical activity um, in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean and off the southeast U United States coastline in that kind of a pattern. So despite the negatives uh, that we just discussed, the fact that we have the La Nina may still allow the Caribbean to have some activity, especially compared to last year, which was a record lull in activity in this area um, in the Caribbean where uh, the wind shear was the highest on record during the hurricane season this year will not be that way. So we have more potential for storms, certainly more than the last couple of years in the Caribbean due to this pattern. But overall, there are some problems for the Atlantic hurricane season. Despite the La Nina, this is one of those configurations where even though we have the La Nina, we may not have as much tropical activity as you might expect. So here's the CFS precipitation again, showing a kind of the kind of different things in the European model just to show the disagreement here. It actually has a dry Caribbean and a wet MDR. Um, I kind of side more with the European on this one. Um, I, the CFS does have a wet bias in the eastern and central Atlantic in general and it may not be sh uh, seeing things correctly here. I think the European is more likely to be correct with a drier main development region and perhaps near to above normal precipitation in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. But the CFS does show in general the lower than normal shear that you might expect in a year like this where uh, despite the Pacific being less than optimal, you still have the La Nina, so you get uh, weaker trade winds, westerly anomalies in the Caribbean, and easterly anomalies aloft, and so you get weaker vertical wind shear in general. So this is a more favorable environment for storms being portrayed in the models in general over the Atlantic. That doesn't mean that you'll necessarily get storms everywhere here, um, but it does show that it'll be less hostile than last year for storms. Now we talked about analogs. Uh, the models we only trust so much you normally rely on history for hurricane season forecast to see uh, where what similar, simil similar situations gave you in terms of hurricane activity. And again, because of this pattern, we don't have this positive PDO and La Nina happening very much in the historical record. Not to mention that the Atlantic is now going into a more negative tripole mode, which we have not seen much of since 1995. Um, and this is kind of new um, in this era, and so this ocean configuration really has no analogs. A negative AMO, positive PDO, La Nina configuration has not really occurred in the reliable historical record, and so this makes it difficult to find good analogs to compare with. 
However, there are a couple of decent ones. One is 1985, where we had a big La Nina. It wasn't falling off of an El Nino. It was actually a multi-year La Nina, so that's one problem. But it did have this subtropical warmth east of Hawaii. This was technically a positive PDO. It's not that really nice horseshoe shape, but you do get the subtropical warmth here. So you could see the anomalous convection that year in the East Pack. In addition, it has the negative Atlantic tripole cold, warm, cold, which is what we're dealing with this year as well. So it has kind of the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic correct, and that makes it a decent analog as far as the ocean goes. 1988 is also a pretty decent analog, where again you have warm subtropics, you have a big La Nina. This is actually a very strong La Nina. We probably won't get that strong this summer, and it came on quicker, but we do have the La Nina, and then we have this big warm pool in the Central Atlantic, which is what we have this year as well. Cold North Atlantic, warm middle, and you know still warm but cooler in the actual tropics. So both of these years from the 80s um, are decent analogs. There are three more in the top five that show up objectively when you correlate the current SSTs. Uh, you get 1970, 1973, and 2007. These have bigger problems. They aren't really great analogs, but they at least show you La Niña's with uh, less than optimal configuration in the Atlantic Basin. And so if you put these two years together with those other three, which I won't show you, you get your top five analogs. And this is what you get for the distribution of tropical cyclone track density anomaly for those five analog years. So here orange indicates more storms than normal and blue indicates fewer storms than normal. And so what it's showing here is some interesting features that you get uh, above normal track density, more storms than normal in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico and near the US coastline during these years. Uh, and you get fewer storms out in the main development region. And this makes some sense with the sea surface temperature configurations from those years. And the similarities to this year um, kind of give you a hint that some of the models showing at least normal levels of activity in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, and perhaps even some slightly above levels, above normal levels of activity. Maybe on to something, uh, given that we still have the La Nina here, and so we're going to have positive pressure anomalies here, lower than normal pressure anomalies likely in the Caribbean, slower trade winds, certainly less wind shear than the last couple of years, and so you may at least have a better chance of seeing some enhanced activity in this area of the world um, this year, um, since we have the La Nina. But again, because of the problems that we're dealing with, where we have this positive PDO coming for the summer, um, and this negative Atlantic tripole with warm over cooler, then you may have trouble getting a lot of hurricanes coming off of Africa. Kind of like last year and the year before, uh, there's been a lot of dry air. This configuration with cold south of Greenland means you're going to have a strong Azores high, and so this brings very strong trade winds out of the um, eastern Atlantic, so that means dry stable air getting into the region where tropical waves usually try to develop, and so this likely means less of a chance of development for most of the tropical waves coming off Africa. So you likely get less activity here. And when you get less storms coming off of Africa, that also means fewer storms available to track across the Atlantic and impact the Caribbean and the United States. However, the environment to the west here may allow homegrown genesis to be more of a problem in this area. And so if you take the net combination of all of the factors we've talked about, the positives for a favorable hurricane season being the La Nina in the Pacific, the negatives being the positive PDO and the negative Atlantic tripole, put those competing factors together, and this is what I think um, is the general outcome for the summer. In general, a near normal season, something like 10 to 13 storms, so something close to normal, um, below normal activity in the main development region, but perhaps near normal or even slightly above normal activity to the west of that in the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, and east of the United States. Um, as you have very warm water off the eastern seaboard, which means you can get genesis in the subtropical latitude storms that form out here and then recurve and influence Bermuda. Some can even form here and then move toward the United States. Um, so you can get genesis here, and you can get genesis in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So you may see more storms that are forming farther west this year, perhaps even tropical waves that fail to develop due to the problems that we talked about. They move west, and then they don't develop until they get into here. That may be the problem that we have to watch for us. It so often is that even if uh, the main part of the basin is inactive, you always have to watch close to home for developments outside the tropics. 
and uh, normally this doesn't give you as many US landfalls when you have this kind of a pattern but it's always something that can happen if you get Genesis anywhere in here um, some land area in the Caribbean Central America or the US usually gets hit when when storms form in here and with the La Nina this year this region may see more activity than it's seen the last couple of years um, although perhaps not you know gangbusters activity like 2000 uh, 10 or 2005. 2010 had a lot of activity in here. We may not see quite that much, but as normal, uh, this is a very general outlook, and it is impossible to tell you uh, whether you will get hit in your location. Nobody can tell you that in advance. Every storm is unique to the conditions that it forms in. All we can say months in advance when we don't know where or when storms will form is, in general, what might we expect overall and this really shouldn't change how you prepare for the season. Everyone should be fully prepared because you can just never know um, who is going to get hit this year. Um, we always hope for nobody, but usually somebody does. So make sure that if it's you, you're prepared. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.